Hey everybody, it's Amanda Davis, owner and founder of Business Solutions by Design, your accounting ally. Coming back to you this week to talk about finding help, desperately seeking somebody, right? Uh, hopefully you're in this position because you've done such an amazing job of selling your product or your programs and you've got uh, lots of work that needs to be done. So that's the first step is, do you really need help? Is this something, is this the right time? Do you really need to have somebody else do this other work and why? Uh, there's lots of reasons for that. Sometimes it just gets you out of running your business or working on your business instead of in your business. So it can let you step out and do more successful things for your business or your organization. When you find that you're in that period where you do need help or expertise, that kind of thing, um, then you need to decide, can you afford it, right? What is it gonna cost you and can you sustain that cost? So you have to look at your books, you have to understand your budget and you have to be able to say, yes, I can bring this person on at this price point. They're either gonna be full-time, part-time, uh, what have you. And then once you've got all of that figured out and you figured out how to get the right talent in, you found the right person, you have the right numbers, uh, you got to decide whether they're a contractor or whether they're an employee. Now, you may not have a lot of leeway here, right? Some businesses tend to prefer contractors because then you don't have to get set up on payroll, you're not looking at benefits, you're not looking at labor laws and down the road, all these things, right? But the IRS is pretty strict, so you've got to be very careful with um, the nature of, of the relationship you are having with the person you're bringing on and to determine whether they are an independent contractor or an employee, <clears throat> the IRS has on their website a test and you can take the test and figure out is the, can this person actually qualify as a contractor and if the answer is yes, then you need to decide between you and that contractor if that's the type of relationship that they want to be in because if they are a contractor, they are in business for themselves. They are not having taxes withheld, the income's gonna be reported on a 1099, and they're gonna have to take uh, the consequences for all of that. And in the state of New Mexico, uh, they'll have to deal with gross receipts tax on, on that uh, 1099 income that you're paying them. So unless you can issue them what's called an NTTC, every state is different, every uh, locality and municipality has different sets of rules. In most cases, if you're a service-based business in a a uh, state that doesn't have gross receipts tax, say they only have sales tax on products, then you're likely not running into that issue. The only issue that would be would be um, federal and, and state uh, income taxes. So you just really kind of have to work all of that out. Uh, for me, if I'm gonna do business with somebody, I want them to actually understand exactly what they're getting into before we go down that road. And some of the things that you can find out is if you think that they're a contractor and you legitimately put them in that position, um, and you feel like you've done it correctly, you could be wrong. So definitely go back and look at those tests on the IRS's website to make sure that you have the right classifications because if something goes wrong and the contractor really feels that they were misclassified, they can contact the authorities, let them know. You can actually be charged if uh, the employee is found to be in, uh, correct. If, if the employee should have, if, if, you're, if the person working with you should have been an employee, the IRS can say, yeah, they should have been. Now you owe us all these payroll taxes plus penalties and interest because you didn't do the right thing, bad employer. Uh, they can sue you for, well not sue you, they, they can go after you for workers comp and all that kind of stuff. So just make sure if your contractors are legitimately contractors, make sure you understand, make sure you have an agreement. It's even stronger if you're not their sole employer. If, uh, if they have uh, uh, customers, different customers other than you, those type of things. So the, the law is pretty, pretty clear and it usually is in favor of the employees so uh, be very careful in your classifications and if you're concerned ask somebody we here at business solutions by design will be happy to discuss that with you and go through the tests and see what makes sense and what doesn't so let us know uh, in addition if, if, if you're ready to to be able to finance and afford them we'd be happy to discuss that with you so uh, let us know how how it is you're growing and how it is you're finding your talent and and all that good stuff because uh, good good help is is very hard to find so when you find those good people uh, cherish them and treat them well <laughs>
This is Amanda Davis, owner and founder of Business Solutions by Design. We'll be coming to talk to you next week. Bye now.